Stream 2 pipeline. What is it and why it is in news? So Nord Stream 2 is a pipeline that goes from Russia, Russia se leke European countries ki or gas pipeline jo bichhai jari hai. That are part of Nord Stream. So there was Nord Stream 1 in the first phase construction of Nord Stream pipeline. Then there was Nord Stream 2 pipeline that was again AG project company. Mission being Nord Stream 2 was based on successful experience building Nord Stream gas pipeline. The gas pipeline also helps between Gazapuram and European consumers. Now what is the significance of NS2 pipeline? There is economical environmental friendly, it is protecting environment and it is conserving economy and link is shortest which 1224 kilometer and dollar 11 billion. So this Nord pipeline was cancelled by uh, attack of Russia over the Ukraine by Germany. The Germany was a connecting deal between Russia and the European nations. The Germany cancelled Nord 2 pipeline in respect of in, uh, Russia's waging war conditions over Ukraine and that again becomes an unfriendly route to double Russia's gas export to Germany. Uh, energy security in Europe, yes this is the map showing Russia's Moscow and Yerbrak city. So here this one is Nord Stream, Nord Stream first and this is Nord Stream 2, this is Nord Stream first and this is Nord Stream 2, Estonia to Germany, via Poland, Ukraine was also there, so Ukraine is having a war zone with Russia and due to this war zone the pipeline project was cancelled by Germany. Now next part is World Bank, what are the Britain Woods institutions that are looking into the matters of sovereignty and issues of contention. So there is a World Bank groups, these are called as Britain Woods twins established in the year 1944 at the end of World War II. Second, so Britain Wood institutions are the institutions that are governing the global economy in terms of financing, providing loans to the developing country. Then there is infrastructure bank and development, which helps developing country to develop infrastructure. There is IFCA that helps in financing to the various developing projects to the developing countries. There are various projects by World Bank Group, by IBRD. International Development Association and IDA which helps to world's poorest country to develop their economic potential, to develop their infrastructure, to help in their economical projects and also help into financial matters. So there is multilateral investment guarantee agency MEGA, then there is International Financial Corporation IFSC, then there is EXCEED International Centre for Settlement and Investment Dispute. Private sector is also there which are strengthened by the World Bank groups. Then there is International Monetary Fund. What it does? It provides the International Monetary System stability. It also has a currency basket and it also governs over the uh, matters of uh, monetary transactions, it looks into the monetary transactions and overall dollar scenario. So global exchange rates are also governed by IMF, then IMF look into the matters of exchanges with the other government bodies, IMF also looks into the changes at various kind of currencies, 
it also leads to inclusion of new currency into the basket such as japan's yen currency and chinese ruble was recently added so that are all a part of the imf now what is a new global economic consensus so g7 panel has recently announced that conciliation and re-regulation of the economic panel and that are part of the report between public and private partnership then since 1989 washington consensus defined the rules of the game the global economy then there is cornwall consensus this consensus is known as cornwall consensus remember this fact for your films and mains on all consensus so there was a washington consensus which minimizes the state's economy and pushed aggressive free market agenda it leads to deregulation privatization and trade liberalization what are the key features of cornwall consensus accelerate reform of global economic governance to provide common goods it also established collective and mechanism monitor to assess and invest the addressing emerging economies it also aims to accelerate investment in the sustainable development goals and provide digital inclusion eliminate tax evasion and facilitate full access for the developing countries in the global market now what are the inequalities that are being widened so recent world inequality index by wealth gap shown that inequalities at various level at social level at political level at various sections of society are getting increased so inequalities are the differences that are prevalent in the social structure and those inequalities lead to rise in the rich and poor earlier karl marx shows that there is proletariat and bourgeois class so inequality is a uh, uh, common prosperity and a phenomena where the rise of wealth of certain class keep on rising and the other class remains poor poorer and poorest now what is economic inequality in the wealth gap economic inequality in unequal distribution of income opportunity position groups of the society so inequality how in event in the economy in the income inequality the richest 10% and the uh, poorest 10% in oecd countries reached 7.2 times in mid 1980s in mid 1980s the gap of the riches and the poorest people raises 7.2 times and 9.6 times in the 2013 so 9.6% is the gap and it is measured by gini coefficient gini coefficient kya karta hai that measures the inequalities now next part is uh, while total wealth has increased everywhere albeit with the widening gap between nations per capita wealth has not increased while well, inequality report shows that uh, 10% of the global population owns 76% of the global wealth and captured 52% of total income by 2021 that is 10% population bottom 50% that is 10% at the peak level and controls the 50% of resources then bottom 50% of global population just 2% of wealth and 8% of income women make just third of the global level income which has very limited changes in 1990 then very moderate wealth tax for the global billionaires can generate 1.6% of global income gini coefficient used to as a tool for checking out the inequalities and uh, what are the difference between richer and poorer class in the society now it represents the perfection of equality level at the income level and also caters the inequality in the society so have we have a graph that shows the gini coefficient in a percentage so it shows that the rise in the employ unemployment also leads to inequality and as the time raises the inequality keeps rising so as the income goes rising 
from 0 to 25, the inequality is also rising with the percentage of population. So, A is the total earning class upon A plus B that is a formula for gaining coefficient. Now, what is the reduction income of inequality? So, there is a taxation reform in order to reduce inequality, there is subsidies and transfer that are made by government of India. Government also made protecting rights and making policy initiative in order to uplift and provide mobility to the poorer section then improve income distribution. So, for stability and development government make facilitation of digitalization, supports MSME, reduces regional disparity and enhance the financial supervision. Also government provides social safety net, increases pension net, then it also improves medical security, it also improves housing security in which various houses are provided which are secured, then equal access to basic services are provided. Now, income differences are accumulated by generations, the economic inequality are significant reflection of differences between the parents and previous generation and the number of children expenditure on the education, health and that is again varying with the people to people. Then mobility is there from a present situation to again a better position that is again called as mobility. Then monetary resource constraints are there that means the finances in terms of low finances and low monetization due to black money in the market, tax evasion, small tax base, black money is again a grave situation. Now what are other factors that is human capital constraint, higher inequality decreases human capital accumulation as well leads to a vicious cycle of low income low productivity, low taxes, low human capital, wealth distribution challenges leading to uneven distribution of wealth and uneven distribution of money and assets among the various sections of society that is a challenge. Whether it should be focused on disparity between top versus bottom or greater focus should be held with the disparities between top and lower then differences between middle class to leverage the rise of economic activities for higher tax difficult question to answer. Now next part is capital account convertibility, what is CAC and what are the issues surrounding the CAC. So capital account has a conversion ratio by the governor of Reserve Bank of India has indicated that CAC framework that is a part of balance of payment again which has a capital account and current account. So, capital account convertibility is also reassuring the debate relating to capital account liberalization. What does the capital account convertibility mean? It refers to the ability to convert domestic currency to foreign currencies and vice versa to make payment for balance of payment transactions. So, we see that the concept of balance of payment are uh, discussed about the capital account and current account. Balance of payment of a country has all economic transaction with the rest of the world in terms of individual, business, government with other part of the world. So, capital account covers the outflow from foreign assets, foreign direct investment, loans, banking capital non-banking financial companies, banking collateral as well as various majors that are a part of banking structure. So, these are all needed to be converted in order to get benefit out of it. So, jab CAC rahega, so the capital can be converted into currency, so, conversion ratio should be higher and that leads to infusion of more money for the other sector development in the economy. Next part is the current account which goes for visible trade, export and import, invisible exports, unilateral transfers and the services that are taken. So, transfers of grant, gift and 
other foreign shares into the Indian market that are all part of the current account system. Now next part is PM Gati Shakti Yojana in order to develop the multimodal connectivity. Multimodal connectivity is provided by PM Gati Shakti improving roadways and railways infrastructure. So it is a digital platform to bring 16 ministry together railways, roadways, highways and other integrated multimodal network planning group which will provide the development of the all the infrastructure related project and boosting of the various projects inside it. There is Bhaskara Charya National Institute for Space Application and Geoinformatics will lead part into the space connection and the multimodal transfer. So about Bhaskara Charya Institute, it is located in Gandhi Nagar based on scientific culture and Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology METI and it undertakes project for satellite communication, geoinformatics, geospatial technologies and so on. So, aid provided by PM Gati Shakti, sea load structure, lack of coordination between ministries and departments. So, sea load structure and lethargy ko reduce karne ke liye PM Gati Shakti yojana lai gi hai that means coordination between various departments. Further, it reduces time and cost over terms when there is huge time consumption and there is huge cost for the various products then that is also curtailed by this project. Third part is the lack of common vision that is ministries lack different kind of vision for different kind of projects that again make a part of distinguishing of the various projects and gap between the proper planning strategies. Then initiative technology monitoring coordination mechanism is again a part of it. Last is the wasteful expenditure. So government provides a proper expenditure which goes waste many a time due to lack of coordination, lack of infrastructure and other measures that is supported by departments at various level. So construction of agencies, underground cables, gas pipeline is also a part of this project. Now next part is other potential benefit. So, Due to PM Gati Shakti Yojana, we are having a digital backbone on national infrastructure pipeline and it provides much needed and national infrastructure pipeline for helping the coordination between various production and transfer of goods and services. It helps in employment generation, it provides more and more employment to the skilled and uh, educated youth of the India. It also proves for the economic zone and cluster creation. It also providing leveraging technology on the basis of ISRO and BISAG. So what are these provisions? The provisions for newly developed advanced technology for space infrastructure is provided through ISRO and BISAG that again makes a huge part in terms of their space application and geoinformatics data. Then next part goes for the improved productivity and competitiveness. So economic zones like textile cluster, pharmaceuticals, agri zones, defense, fishing cluster, they all need different kind of infrastructure base, different kind of funding. So productivity in these sectors are improved by various planning and other strategies. So these are all provided through PM Gati Shakti Yojana by linking and providing a multimodal cooperation project. Now also it reduces the logistics cost that was again a part of this project in which logistics are reduced and have high around 13 percent of GDP which is again uh, part of good competitiveness in India's market and industries and plan enable easier interconnectivity and reduce the travel time between the manufacturers and the market players. Remember this fact for your blimps as well as means point of view.